Oh, the name came first, actually. I, I can't remember exactly where from, but uh, um, I recall someone in a conversation mentioning the phrase grab by the goalies and thought, hmm, that would make a, a good name for a game at some point. Grab by the Ghoulies is a romp through a haunted house. You play as Cooper. Him and his girlfriend have been um, ambling through the countryside and all of a sudden she's kidnapped by Baron Von Ghoul and taken into this weird, dark-looking mansion. And so Cooper goes into the house to try and rescue her through uh, the traditional method of beating up everything in sight. You basically went from room to room and each room was a self-contained, almost like a puzzle. You had to either kill everything in the room or you had to smash all the items in the room, which was kind of cool for those days. You take on skeletons and zombies and mummies and little weird imps, and yeah, you just got to smash and crash your way through to uh, rescuing Amber. We'd finished Banjo Tui, and it was the same cool team, sort of midway through development when Rare became part of Microsoft. So then, just how it all worked out, that ended up being the first title released by Rare as part of Microsoft. So the biggest technical challenge to begin with was the transition, because obviously Ghoulies had been built up on the, the Dolphin, on the GameCube, and then transitioned over to the Xbox itself. Now, it wasn't meant to be a massive 80-hour game. It was meant to be something you could do quite quickly. And Greg came up with the idea of Grab by the Ghoulies. I remember the pitch dot, and it sounded, oh, that sounds like the perfect antidote to a big, massive, sprawling platform adventure game. I uh, wanted to do like a, a fun take on a beat em up uh, and that's kind of where it came from. I was a, was a massive fan of Scooby-Doo and kind of had that firmly in my mind of uh, putting a character in, in a kind of a Scooby-Doo-esque haunted house which is uh, more funny than scary. It was designed so that anybody could pick it up and play. Um, I think we spent a good few months just working on the fighting mechanics. Many games to kind of get a lot of functionality into a fighting system means lots of buttons. Grab by the Ghoulies just use the, the two sticks. So you'd walk in one direction with one stick and then you'd just point the other stick in the direction you wanted to attack. The character would automatically reel off a combo of cool looking punches and kicks. I, I just play beat em ups after a while and just hammer whatever's close to me, whereas this allowed me just to forget that and enjoy what was unfolding on screen. Yeah, a lot of the stuff in Gullies was inspired by kind of old films, things like Marx Brothers or even the Keystone Cops or kind of Laurel and Hardy. They had that kind of almost slapstick comedy about them. So that's why in Gullies you can pick up all sorts of things, like you pick up paintings and smash them over people's heads. We wanted that kind of knockabout slapstick element to it. One of the, the biggest artistic influences was the directive from Greg basically saying, no straight edges no straight edges anywhere. As, as with many rare games, we wanted a look we could own. We were kind of pondering what could we do to give it its look, so we came up with the idea of everything having this kind of crooked look to it. Games from the era just look like poorly textured shoe boxes, I think, a lot of the time, when they have just kept to the 90 degree rule. Whereas Ghoulies, it, it, because it's pushed against that, I think it survived longer. It's mean that the, the, the house itself looks like a character in the game. It's got a certain style that even now, um, certainly is when it's been re-released on Rare Replay in, in HD, it, it still holds up, it still looks current, and I think that's because we went for a very, um, a very timeless style and didn't try and make it realistic. All the style, all the shaders, all the colour, all the personality is exactly as the artist did it back in the day, and I think it talks wonders to their talent. They were a classical mix of things you expect to find in a haunted house, so there was like skeletons and kind of mummies and hunchbacks and we even kind of roped in a few kind of mythical things like uh, the Medusa. My favourite character I think has to be the skeletons because they are just swines and they take such glee in it as well. You see them just like run around um, almost like high-fiving each other I think when they've hit you because they're just properly celebrating. I think it's all down to the animation that's been put into them. Um, but there's just something worrying like if you're if you're distracted in one corner and you can see out the corner of your eye that the skeleton's just gone Whoa! and he just rushes over and picks up a pool cue and then just you can see him just tromping over ready to smash you with it. I, they're just brilliant. We ended up with um, Baron Von Gaul as, as the main kind of baddie in the game. We came up with the idea that he's 
not just mad, but kind of almost childish mad at the same time. It was inspired by a kind of a British comedian called uh, Bernie Clifton, whose whole act was him imagining riding uh, an ostrich. We kind of took that inspiration that a kind of a grown man could have this costume around him and, and kind of get into the persona of something that he clearly was not. Fiddlesworth, the groundskeeper, we kind of came up with the idea of every time he appeared on screen, he would introduce himself with I like a little saying which became known as fiddlerisms. Oh, mash my marrows. Or um, rub my radish. They tried to create double entendres that weren't double entendres. I remember having a Word document full of possible fiddlerisms that we, that we, you know, that we could use every time he appeared on screen. And bash my beef, we got told to remove that. Choke my chicken, didn't make it. Pet my piglet, that made it. Wash my lettuce, funnily enough. Um, means something um, quite particular in America, so we had to take that one out. And I genuinely did not understand what that meant at the time. I've since looked it up and wish I hadn't. Sorry. Um. I have a particular soft spot for the Grim Reaper, who was my first character within Ghoulies, so I affectionately call him Junior. He came out and he had his, and it had his touch of death, and if he, if he touched the player, he'd kill them. Um, but I think. I'm sure this was accidental that uh, when we were playing the game, uh, he, he once touched one of the bad guys and, and killed him as well. Uh, because it was using the same software, he basically just killed anything. And that was kind of one of those inspirational moments where well, that's, uh, we could use that. As in every game, you, all, you always have things that are either planned or things you start but, but actually can't get in the game for one reason or another, either you run out of time or they don't turn out as, 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 as good as you hoped or something else comes along and takes their place. So one of the features that never actually made it into Grab by the Ghoulies was uh, a co-op feature. I think this was something that we all were hoping to try and squeeze it in at one point, and that was to have two characters running around the house trying to do all the challenges. Um, and one of the problems we have from an engineering point of view was just how we could get that to work. Um, if they had been in a, a big open arena, it would have been fine because you'd have this uh, space to work with. But in a tiny house, the camera was the, the death knell for this. So we hit upon the idea of having a museum room in, in the house that the players go through and all the kind of stuffed exhibits in the glass cases which you could smash were going to be all the characters that we cut. So we thought, OK, we're being clever here. We're, we're reusing all these things that we were going to cut. The ironic thing was the museum itself got cut in the end, so the whole room went. I'm very proud of Ghoulies. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to go down as that, that Metacritic high point, but I think everyone who worked on the team really loved it because there, there was a great big family atmosphere, I think, in the barn. But I think in hindsight, a lot of people now, when they look back at that game and play it, you know, they look at it very fondly, and I think rightly so. We love making that game and we love playing it and I, it still comes out now at home here. Every um, Halloween I get it out and the kids play it and stuff. So, you know, I've got nothing but fond memories about that game. It was a, a good bunch of people and we had a, we had a right laugh putting it together and I think you can see that in the end result. It's, uh, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, it's just good, simple fun. Pick up Rare Replay to see more on the making of your favourite games. And you can watch some exclusive ones right now. The making of Banjo-Tooie and the making of Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. If you like those, don't be a lurker. Like and subscribe for more. Cheers, ears.